right, in 7 LFO, Andy here. Got the uh, True SDX kit showed up today. So I'm just taking a look at what's inside here. I did unwrap uh, a couple of turns of saran wrap there that were holding it together. So it was nicely packaged. Comes in three, well, two different baggies. Got some uh, instructions here, parts list, detailed assembly instructions. Go to the website, right, yes. Sounds good. I need those, I'm sure. And then uh, we got two boards. Yep, three packages. All right, so two boards. Again, these are pre populated with all of the um, small soldering components, the fine, delicate work. And then the through hole pieces are left to the assembler. Um, this one says it has been programmed with firmware. We've got the board serial number, so I can record that to use it for future upgrades or to program my call sign into the firmware. Uh, and then we got a bag of parts uh, real quick. I can see all the wire for those uh, toroid transformers and coils. See a little uh, LCD screen and speaker. Look like they're packaged up separately. That's awesome so they don't get damaged and scratched. Rotary encoder. Looks like we got everything ready to go. I'll dump those out in a bit and uh, tidy up around here so I can get to it. All right, so working on the uh, True SDX build. Um, watching the video, there wasn't any mention of these screws and spacers. Uh, looking through some Facebook build photos and things like that for the group, plenty of folks were using them for that. So I just wanted to make sure those parts aren't for something later on. Good to go, use those for the screen. Um, I went ahead and put the short pins up and that means I can trim the other longer pins on the back side. So. Definitely, like the video points out, this this has a little bit of play. So, uh, you know, make sure it's straight before you finalize the soldering. Like, try to, you know, solder one pin and then solder the rest. So, that's going to be my next step. All right, time to wind some toroids. Got everything put onto the uh, main board. LED, uh, OLED panel, jumpers for the header, audio in and out key, three switches, a microphone, and a rotary encoder. Ready to go. Looking over, this is the standard RF board, five band board that came uh, with the kit. Got our five relays put in place, the three FETs put in place. Not the tidiest, but they weren't pre-bent. I bent the leads by hand, so I'll call it good. Uh, this connector, that was a little fussy, so, you know, I, I should have borrowed from my uh, welding understanding and tried to spot solder at first. I, I tinned the pads, and then there's not enough clearance to get it on, so I had to kind of wiggle it on one micron at a time. Uh, but it's on there. So, yeah, slide it on first, tack one corner down, and then solder the rest of them if you're doing that. Uh, otherwise, time to wind some more... Uh, Toroids, I got the first 10 turn one done. Got a uh, bunch more to go. All right, um, yeah, maybe a third of the way through the uh, toroid windings. Uh, I started out winding a few and uh, it became clear that it's just easier to wind one, for me anyway, wind one, install it, wind the next one, install it. That way I don't have to keep track of which is which. Uh, obviously you can count turns and stuff if you need to, uh, but it's not bad, and, you know, they're small, right? I got big fingers for this sort of thing, but uh, making it work, making sure to spread out those turns. Uh, you scra scrape off the, um, you know, this is coated wire, so scrape off the enamel. There it is, you can see the, it's got sort of a, orangish color and you start to scrape it off you see even shinier clear copper underneath and did that on all kind of all four sides of the wire make sure you turn it around just using the, the edge of a knife got a little little leatherman knife um gonna have to sharpen it after that but it's working just fine and uh, we will carry on with this 
I did realize that uh, I got carried away with the build and forgot to video the last few steps, but the rest of it followed the instructions quite closely and went together really well. I did realize at the end that I had put the speaker together without including the speaker mount, which is a separate 3D printed piece. So I had to desolder the speaker, thread the wires, and then resolder it. So pay attention to that if you're building a full cased version. I don't know that that's essential, but it is something that I skipped. Oh, just got the ham alert ping from RBN, so RBN picked it up at least. Everything's working. Reverse Beacon Network picked up that CQ call. Three different listening stations reported it. Uh, each of them had pretty decent signal to noise ratio, and these are all several hundred miles away, so that's not bad. Uh, it does look like I should probably adjust the internal oscillator frequency. RBN's reporting me one kilohertz high, uh, but otherwise pretty impressive for uh, straight out of the box. Thanks for watching and hope to catch you on the air.